amazing opportunity to experience Jesus. Second Corinthians 1 and verse 21 now, in which establish us with you. Hey everyone, get ready for an event that will transform your life. We are excited to announce the annual conference tag, This Same Jesus, happening from October 17th to 20th, 2024 at the Deeper Life Convention Center, St. Clement this is going to be a powerful time with the General Superintendent of the Deeper Life Bible Church, Pastor Dr. W.S. Kamini, and Pastor Michael Bad, a regional overseer of the Mid-Atlantic, South One, South Two, and Queens, New York. Whether you're a child, youth, young adult, adult, or senior, this conference has something incredible for you. Expect powerful preaching, miracles, dynamic teaching sessions, prayer, worship, and uplifting song instruction. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to experience Jesus. My Father without fear. The holiness and righteousness before him all the days of my life. O oh Lord, establish me in faith and in holiness. The Lord will do it for you. This is what we need to run every day. As the day is up. We run in faith. We run in holiness. And God will find us in faith. Find us in holiness. Pray that God will help us. Pray for anointing in your life now. Anointing with the Holy Ghost. Anointing with power. Ask God to give it to you. Ask God to give it to you. Holy Ghost and power. With the Holy Ghost in our life, we will have the gift. We we'll have gifts. Gift, gift of faith, gift of revelations, gift of discernment of the spirit. We can discern. We need that discerning spirit in our church today. Gift of teaching. We will be able to teach. If we have the teaching spirit, the teaching of the word of God, our members will be established. God grant us his grace. Make us ministers indeed that have the power of the Holy Ghost. Church, pray. We are in the last, in the very last day. The last moment we have. Once we close from here, everybody will find their square roots. Everybody will find their square roots. And you need prayer to sustain us, to continue in this work. Pray that God will help you. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are going to pray for our Father in the Lord. Our pastor, you will agree with me, he has impacted into you. That the word of God in his mouth will not fall to the ground. All his prayers will be yes and amen. That all the food... All the water, all the air he takes will build up his health. Amen. Shall we pray together? He has impacted into us. We need to pray for him. God will give him all these things. It's our prayer he needs. It's our prayer that we sustain him. We want more of him. The Almighty God will help him. The Almighty God will strengthen him. The Almighty God will empower him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This time we are going to pray that the fruits of the crusade will abide. Let's pray together. All over the world. The fruit of the crusade will abide. In the states, in the regions, in the alpha location, the fruit of the crusade will abide. God 
God in his infinite mercy and power will sustain them, will uphold them. So many of them gave their life to Christ. We need to pray for them. That the Almighty God, He will sustain them. He will uphold them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So many people receive healing and deliverance. In fact, yesterday night, somebody who heard of this GCK, all the way from Cardona, he has to run down. He believed that the power of God will heal him. Ah, and so he came down. And actually, she was healed. We are going to pray that all of them that were healed throughout this program, the healing will remain. Shall we pray for them? All the miracle they receive will abide, will be sustained. It will be sustained. It will be sustained. The people, as they go home, people will believe more. They will believe Christ the more because they know them before. Look at that madman. That the miracle will, will remain, will abide in their lives. Let's pray that it will be sustained. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray for the host pastor. It's not an easy thing. The host pastor and the workers in debtor states. That God will bless them. God will answer all their prayers. God will establish them. Shall we pray for them? They have labored to see that you and I will enjoy all these benefits. We want to sustain them in prayer. All that God has laid hands on. All the workers, all the pastors, all the choristers, all the ushers, all the head workers, all those that work in the kitchen, every one of them, God will bless them. They will receive their blessing. They will receive their miracle. They will go home and see blessing in their life, miracle in their life. Pray that the Almighty God will surely bless them. In Jesus' name, we pray. There's one prayer that Jesus said we should pray, which I want us to pray. He said, pray that you will not enter into temptations. We are going to pray that prayer, that God will help us. That God will help us to be over and above every temptation that come our way. Shall we pray together? As we go home, as we go home, as we go home, as we are at home, in the course of ministration, whatever temptation that come our way, the Lord will see us through. We will escape. We will come out. The Lord will strengthen us. The Lord will empower us. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, my Lord, I've answered my prayer. I will sing praises to him. I say, I answer. Father, we earnestly appreciate you. You've done wonderfully in every life here. Lord, in your power and spirit, help us to sustain your blessings in our lives. We are fragile. We don't have power of ourselves. 
No man take this honor upon himself, except it be given unto him. You have given us this gift. No power will take it away from us. Help us to go in this might and sustain in this might that at the end you'll be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the final day of the ministerial conference for the August edition 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen. As you've come this morning, I pray that the anointing for end time harvest will be imparted in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up as we worship the Lord together this morning. As we give him all the glory. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To God be the glory, great things he had so long be the world. Is he son who is his life and atonement for Ah! 
tell the Lord, let His power come down upon you. Amen. Your blessings in our lives. We are fragile. We don't have power of ourselves. No man take care of this honor upon himself, except to be given unto him. You have given us this gift. No power will take it away from us. Help us to go in this might and sustain in this might that at the end you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the final day of the ministerial conference for the August edition 2024 in Jesus' name. Amen. As you've come this morning, I pray that the anointing for end time harvest will be imparted in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up as we worship the Lord together this morning. As we give him all the glory. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To God be the glory, great things he had so loved he the world. Is he son who
tell the Lord that His power comes down upon you. I want to welcome you to the last day of this epoch-making conference in the name of Jesus. The conference is coming to an end today. But I want to say, today we mark the beginning of fulfilled prophecy. I, know, I just want to remind you, so that you don't forget in a hurry. The covenant of this conference gave a powerful prophecy in this program. And he said, you wonder why many people think they cannot be like Kumoye. But he's saying to you that you will not only be like Kumoye, you will be greater than Kumoye. You are going to go further than Kumoye. You are going to go deeper than Kumoye. And you are going to go higher than Kumoye. Do you believe that? Then say, big amen. Make the amen bigger. Let's make the biggest amen here. God bless you. We're going to sing from our program pamphlet on page three. Give me a double portion. Long ago, in days of old, stood a man of God, we are told. As he 
talk to Elijah that day. He requests he did, he did repeat, standing at Elijah's feet. A double portion, I can hear him say. As Elijah stood that day, Elijah, he did say, Ask me what I shall do unto thee. And Elisha then replied, What did Elijah say? Just frustrated from day to day, but I see there's so much to do to be done that I have to leave and you and this favor I ask of you a double portion. This fight must be won. Give me, Lord, a double portion. Pour thy spirit on me. Through eyes of faith, thy wondrous work I can see. But I need thy helping hand in this troubled, sinful land. Give me, Lord, a double portion from thee.
Lord, I always do the pray just for strength from day to day. We have the cult choir devil.
Complete in him. Complete in him. We are complete in him. Jesus died and he rose. And he took away our sin. Oh, we are complete in him. We are complete in him. Complete in him. Complete. Thank you very much, the Cant Choir. This is the moment we have been waiting for. And I want to say, history is about to be made. Yeah. As we listen to the final message of this conference, to bring our father to the Lord to the podium is Pastor Dr. John Ujokpagogo, chairman can't worry out. What, what a grace. Amen. Amen. What a grace that I will be standing to present a man of greatness. A man that while I was in the university, in my early 90s, he really touched my life with his messages on uh, cassettes and also some of his books I read through a friend who happened to be a member of this body. And after that, I do say that if I have to leave my church where I worship, which is Cherubin and Seraphim Church Movement, the next church I will go if I have to. It's no other place but deep alive. And um, ye yesterday I was talking. My wife said, oh, you remember that that's your second church. I said, that's it. And somehow God made it that at this time, I will be one of the people to host the, our daddy in this land. <laughs> when you look at it, really, I am not supposed by man's standard, but God's will must be perfected and must come to pass. So with this, I want us to see what the word of God says here, and that is what the Lord is building you and building me for. He said, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And that is what our daddy is preparing us for. With this, permit me, as I go on my knee, I want to welcome the vessel of the Lord. <laughs> Pastor Dr. William for Lord Rusha Kumuyi. Thank you. Respect, sir. Thank you. Shake my hand. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Apostle. I, I don't know whether you know, I was born into the Anglican Church. But hear the whole story now. But as a little child, I was searching. And my father knew I was starting. Well, go to the Anglican church. And because of one reason or the other, it didn't feel my soul, my spirit, didn't do everything I wanted. And so as I scouted around, I landed in Cherubim and Seraphim <laughs> church. And I was there. Uh, you might be interested to know, I was actually a drummer there. 
and we did all, you know, we fasted, we prayed, we burnt uh, incense, we, uh, you know, we went into, I can tell you now, all the things that I got. But because I was always searching, searching, and because of what God had prepared me for, actually, uh, when I was to be baptized as an infant in the Anglican church, I said, you know, I wanted the name Johnson because I had seen one Johnson in life and that Johnson impressed me. So I said, I want to have that. And we went, we went, and so we're going to do baptism. I thought they understood what I wanted, what I, what I meant, but they gave me the name William. <laughs> At that time, I wasn't happy. And when they called me William, I'll be thinking of Johnson. <laughs> Eventually, I accepted since I couldn't change it. So now, I am <clears throat> I've been given the name, for not sure that means, the appeal to God that God will watch over this one. Yeah. And the last name, Kumui. That Kumui actually means that uh, death brings honor, victory, joy. I was wondering what kind of name are these. Now I understand. Remember the Lord was leading me somewhere. William, the defender of the faith. <laughs> Follow show means as long as you keep to that destiny, God will be watching over you. Yeah. Kumoyi means the death. I didn't understand that at that time. Now I understand the death of Christ has now brought the glory, the honor, and has brought salvation and release for all people on earth. And so, uh, my, is it my third church, Anglican, German, Seraphim, now Deep Alive Bible Church. <laughs> my third, my final church, now Deep Alive. He, if he has to leave the cherubim and seraphim. Now I know that you will come if you leave. I'm not saying you should leave. If you leave, I'll be waiting at the gate of deeper life. I will welcome you. Everybody say amen. I just want you to know that today we are here for anointing. Anointing on you, even me, greater anointing. And today, you have that anointing in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and bless your name because you are ready for every one of us. And Lord, I pray that this great anointing, this profitable anointing, this wonder-working anointing, bring upon every one of your servants in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give a good heavenly amen. God bless everyone. Today we're looking at ascending, anointing for the end time harvest. Ascending, anointing, an anointing that starts and goes up and goes higher and higher until it reaches the greatest that you can contain, the greatest that you can have. Ascending, anointing for the end time harvest. In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord 
ace upon me because he has anointed me. Look at that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Anointing and the Holy Ghost in feeling they go together. Anointing and Holy Ghost enveloping that he possesses you. You are in him. He is in you and he overflows in your life. Anointing, anytime you think about anointing, you think of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel. We now know the reason for the anointing. The anointing is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. We know now the anointing is for the purpose, for the reason of healing, healing the body, healing the mind, healing the soul, healing your spirit, healing your personality. And then it says to preach deliverance to the captives. The anointing is so that we can proclaim deliverance to the captives and we can have the performance of total deliverance for those who are captured, controlled, tormented by the devil and you see the recovery of sight to the blind. That is the reason why we have the anointing. Open their eyes to understand the scriptures. Open their eyes to see the Savior. Open their eyes to experience that transformational power coming from heaven. Open their blind eyes too. And then it says, it is to set at liberty them that are bruised. Many things uh, bruise people in life. Coming from Satan, from sickness, from spirit, and uh, from, from, uh, uh, from suffering itself. And it says, all those who are going through life and they are bruised. We come with the anointing. And it is the anointing that sets at liberty, that sets free the people who are in captivity. Verse 19, verse 19 says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 20, it tells us that... And uh, he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, those eyes were fastened on him. Verse 21, and he began to say unto them, this day, somebody shout this day. Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? Yeah. Uh, you know, we can read from Genesis to Revelation. If what we read is not fulfilled in our hearts, in our ears, in our ministry, reading, reading, reading is all in vain. But when you read the promise of God, when you read the prophecy of God. When you read the proclamation of God, and you can pin it down and say, this day is this scripture fulfilled in me. The anointing will take you to the highest peak of ministry. Yeah. By looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 20. It says, for all the promises of God in him, a yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Verse 21. In verse 21, it says, now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, anointed us, anointed us, is God. That anointing will come upon your life. Yeah. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the initial anointing. Number two is the increased anointing. Number three is the immeasurable anointing. Number one is the initial anointing from the Savior. You come to the Lord, you turn away from sin, you, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he gives you initial anointing 
from the and you come to the Lord and you have increased anointing. That increased anointing is for service, is for servitude. Initial from the Savior and then increased anointing is now for servant because he, came, he said i came to serve and you too as you have that anointing you come to serve number three immeasurable anointing for service now you are going to service and you are going to touch this and touch this and turn this other thing and your service serving you must serve the young you must serve the old you might serve as an evangelist you might serve as uh, as um, a teacher you might serve as an apostle as a prophet or whatever your area of service as a pastor you need that immeasurable anointing let's come to number one one by one we're looking at this it's the initial anointing from the Savior. It says in John chapter 1, reading from verse 12, it says, but as many as received him, as many anywhere, as many as received him, you're in that local congregation, as many as received him, you're in that other denomination, as many as received him, that must take place in our lives if we're going to have that initial anointing for sonship that will become a real child of God, not because you're in deep life, not because you're in children and seraphim, not because you're in Baptist, not because you're in the assemblies of God, not because of the name of the denomination, but because you made up your mind that it's not the church that saves, it's not the denomination that saves, it is Christ. And he came with salvation, and he says, repent ye and believe the gospel, and you kneel your bench, I don't mean kneeling physically, in your heart, you surrender to the Lord. In your heart, you give all to the Lord, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I, I freely give. I will love him all the days of my life. And you are submissive to his calling, you are submissive to the point you are converted, and you are no longer the same as many as received him. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, not on the name of the founder of Deeper Life, not on the name of the, of the founder of any local church, any denominational church, any national church, will believe on his name. And then he tells us in First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 27. First John chapter 2. We're looking at verse 27. But the anointing which we which ye have received from him, from the Savior. You received of him that, that anointing abides in you. And then he goes on to say that ye need not that any man should teach you. Ah, what does that mean? You need not that any man should teach you again that Jesus is Savior. You know him as Savior already. Not, not needing that anyone will teach you that the Bible is the word of God from cover to cover. You know that already. Not, not, uh, not needing. You don't need that anybody will come and tell you that God is who he is, what he is, and he can do what his word says he can do. We know that already. We don't need to know that the end of life. We don't need to be taught. You know, somebody comes here and he says there will be judgment at the end of life. You know that already. He says the anointing that you have as you gave your life to the Lord and you opened your heart and you opened your eyes and you opened your mind to the word of God. You know the basic, basic things. And you do not need that anyone should teach you about the anointing which you have received. It said that anointing teaches you and there's no lie in him. It says, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Somebody say amen. amen. And then he tells us in Matthew, 
chapter 10, he had called his disciples now. He was bringing them up so that they'll be involved in the work that he came to do. And a lot of things have taken place before this, chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 1. I'm going to read. What are those things? Number one, conversion, conversion. And they left everything, and they came to the Lord, and they followed him, conversion, consecration. They were now going one direction, one job, one ministry, one lifestyle, following after this Christ, what called them, they consecrated completely unto him, submission submission. They had submitted their lives, their hearts, everything in, uh, unto him. Demonstration. Demonstration. In demonstration, Jesus healed the sick. Chapter 4, they saw it. Chapter 5, 6, 7, he gave them the sermon on the mount. Chapter 8, demonstration. He demonstrated the work before them. He cleansed the leper. He healed uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And then they came from everywhere. When the evening was come, he brought all the sick before him, and he spoke the word, and he healed them by the speaking word. Those that were vexed of devils, he healed and set them free. Chapter 9, uh, they brought this man, and they went to the roof, and they removed the towel. They put, they put him before Jesus. He healed. Demonstration. He demonstrated to them what Here now is not going to delegate them. Remember, conversion. Before you can delegate us to go and manifest the anointing, there must be conversion. There must be consecration, total commitment unto the Lord, total submission unto Him. You are the Lord of my life and you control my life. Anything I do, anything I say, anywhere I go, you will be the guide and the leader. It is with that submission you now demonstrated before them, demonstration. And now, delegation has come. It will delegate you. Yeah. I said it will delegate you. Yeah. Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave some clean spirits. He said, what I have demonstrated. I now delegate into your hand. Today, I delegate it into your hand. With greater power, with greater anointing, with greater unction, in Jesus' name. And then he gave them power. He gave some clean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That's the initial anointing they had. And you know, after consecration, sorry, after conversion, then consecration, then submission, then demonstration, then delegation. You see, if you read the whole thing, they came back and they told him what they had done. Supervision, supervision. He supervised the work and they reported back. That's how it happens, that we have the anointing, we go out with demonstration like Christ did because he had delegated unto us, and then we don't run away, we come back. And there is supervision, supervision. After the supervision, there's correction, correction. It says, we should have done this that way. We should have done this that way. Why couldn't we cast out that one? Why couldn't we achieve that one? Uh, it is a area of supervision, and now there is correction, correction. Uh, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, it shall be removed. I said it shall be removed. Yes. And that's the reason why you'll find after that correction, they went back again 
and they are now the consummation of the ministry. I don't have silver and gold, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the fellow did not rise up immediately, but you know, Peter now had correction, and this is going to be the consummation. He held his son, pulled him up, strength and power came to that body. It will happen in Jesus' name. <laughs> They were now in the prison in Acts chapter 5. And as they were in the prison, they locked them up. They were going to judge them. They were not, you know, uh, sorrowful and crying and whatever. They were just rejoicing in the Lord. And in the night, the angel came and took them out. And those iron doors opened before them. Amen. Anointing will increase in your life. Amen. Iron doors will open in Jesus' name. Amen. Go. Stand in the temple and declare to them all this word of life. Initial anointing will become increased anointing. Yeah. Look, look at verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, it says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Uh, why? Because they only had initial anointing. Later, after the initial anointing become increased anointing, it will say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The initial anointing is limited. Later, it will tell them, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea, and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. But now we're dealing with initial anointing. In that initial anointing, go not into the way of the Gentiles or into any city of the Samaritans. Why? Initial anointing. When Philip received that increased anointing, he went to Samaria. And when he got to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, they received and they believed. And then evil spirits were cast out and the sick were healed in Samaria. But at this time now, initial anointing. Go not into any of the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not in. Look at verse 6. In Verse 6, they say, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, that's why Paul the Apostle said to the Jew first and then unto the Gentiles. It's not the Jew only and never for the Gentiles. No, we begin with that initial anointing around us. Well, we're known. Well, we know them. We know their culture. We know their language. We know this is your Israel, your Jerusalem. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. In verse 7, as she go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. In verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. Amen. Amen. Uh, look at that. Heal the sick. They went out, they healed the sick. Then cleanse the lepers. the dead. That initial anointing, if they exercise that initial 